Welcome back to the Opposition Preview. This week, I'm joined by Callum from Team Coppish to look ahead to the game on Sunday. Callum, thank you for joining me. And, you know, before we start, how you been? Not too bad, D. Bro, thank you for having me. Um, really yeah. appreciate you having me on the channel. Um, I'm not going to lie. I'm a little nervous about the game. <laughs> like... <laughs> It, like I obviously like Chris Dambles, well documented. A couple of other yeah. games where Balassi absolutely destroyed Lovren. We have a good record at your place, but it's always a tough. Barring last season, it's always a tough, tough game. So I never really look forward to this game. If I'm going to be honest. Well, look, I said it to you before we started. I, I honestly, I'm looking forward to it. I am, and you might be asking why because you haven't got Zaha, you haven't got Ayu. I, I know you guys have beat Arsenal. We'll talk about that as well. But, you know, you, you can see there, there is weakness in this Liverpool side. There's still some very good players. Don't get me wrong. But Palace on their day, I think we can get a result. And before we actually talk about the game, let's just talk about your season overall. You're sitting second in, second in the league. Yeah. You're about 11 points behind City with a game in hand. Yeah. How would you sum up your season so far? Frustrating. In the Premier League, and here's where it's, it's crazy because Champions League won six out of six games and topped the group, perfect. In the Carabao Cup, we're in the final, perfect. FA Cup, just navigated our way past Shrewsbury, perfect. But the league, to be so far off Man City is extremely frustrating, especially when you look at the fact of we've lost the same amount of games, it's the draws that have really killed us. And if you look back at 18-19 season, it was a draws that killed us. And it feels like it's a bit of a rinse and repeat. And some of the games that we've drawn are very avoidable. So draws against Man City and Chelsea are take. So those are three out of the draws. And when you look at Brighton, when you're 2-0 up and you, you can see two and you, you draw that game. When you look at the Brentford game, when you're 3-2 you're three, up, 3-1 three, up, and you, you concede and you, you drop two points, it's just frustrating. And it just, it takes a lot to overcome this Man City team. You cannot give away silly points and we've given away silly points. Plus, I feel as though if we had added a couple of players in the summer, I don't think we'd be in this position either, but we've made our own bed, so we've got to lie in it. Yeah, well, we beat City 2-0 for you lot and you still yeah, still have points. Yeah, I mean, we try to help you as much as you can, but you guys didn't help yourselves. Exactly. But in terms of realistic expectations this season, what, what is it then? Is it just... Top four, second. Can you still win the league? Like, what? What's the mood like? Uh, what do you guys think you can actually achieve? So, with the league, I think we have to keep on winning and until we play our game in hand and win that game. If we're still eight points behind City, we still have to play them, which we have to win to make it five points. If we're within five points of City, we say fifteen. 13 games to go, then I'd be like, yeah, there's a chance. If we're any more than, I'd say any more than seven points behind City with 13, 14 games to go, I think it's done. Because they are a team that just goes on runs. In terms of what I want from the rest of the season, I've got to be honest, I know I'm going to sound really spoiled, but if I'm not winning the league, I do want a Champions League and a domestic cup. <laughs> and the, and even and the, the sort of the bragging rights between finishing second, third, and fourth doesn't really impact me. I want the league, so if it's not going to be the league, then as long as we're in the top four, then I don't really mind. I'm, I'm sure if Chelsea finish above us, they'll banter us. But really and truly, in the grand scale of things, it would have meant that Chelsea and Liverpool didn't put up a fight against City. So there's nothing to gloat about, in my opinion. Yeah, don't worry about about don't worry about the league. Um, I mean, this weekend that talk will be over, anyways. After the <laughs> so, 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 so you will continue your Champions League talk and domestic trophies. Uh, but talking about your recent performance, you actually played um, midweek against Arsenal, beat them two 0 away from home. How would you um, describe that game for the neutrals that didn't watch it? Um, I'd say it's one of Liverpool's best results this season. And I think you have to look at the overall situation. Kelleher in goal, who's someone I actually really highly rate, but a lot of the fan base is still unsure about him. The back four were excellent, whether it be Canati or Matip for large portions of the game. Had their moments when they weren't as you know, sort of decisive as they could have been and were a little bit sloppy. Midfield was a bit of a worry. Um, Fabinho and Henderson have played a lot of minutes recently and they were able to get over the line in that game and play really well, especially Fabinho. Curtis Jones, again, a player who's developing, but because of the lack of 
sort of personnel at the moment, he's having to play more minutes than he probably would be normally expected to. And then also you've got um, Kai Gordon, who we played up front. He's a 17-year-old who's making his, well, making his Carabao Cup debut at the Emirates against Arsenal in the semi-final. He did miss a guilt edge chance, but again, 17. at 17, I was at sixth form. He's out there playing for <laughs> Liverpool Football Club. There's levels to this, you know what I mean? So I can let him off. But overall, to go to the Emirates against a team that consider themselves to be top four challengers against a team that expected to beat us because they drew in the first leg. And for us to go out there and capably, and in my opinion, quite easily dissemble them, very, very happy with the result. And another cup final. Wembley, here we come, man. Yeah, I mean the most pointless trophy in 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 the whole in, in the whole of the country, but you know you're still in the cup final. <laughs> but um, do you think fatigue will play a part in this game? Considering that you played on Thursday, we know I'm Callum. Me and you spoke about this before on fans bet um, mm. about Jurgen Klopp and his excuses. Do you think he might be doing a bit of squad rotation for this game, or are you guys fit enough to go and face Palace? There will have to be some squad rotation because one thing with Palace is you know you're in for a game, especially under Vieira. This new version of Palace, that again, I'm not just saying this because I'm on your channel. I respect <laughs> Vieira and what he's doing. And if I'm going to be honest, going back to Arsenal, they picked the wrong manager, in my opinion. Like, yeah, I agree. should have gone to Vieira. <laughs> like, he's, a, he's, a, he's an actual Arsenal legend and he's got a philosophy and he's been honing his craft as opposed to Arteta. That's a, that's enough conversation for a different day, though. <laughs> I think we'll what? have to rotate. I think yeah. we'll, um, I think Allison will come back in goal. The back four will be the same. It's just whether he starts with Matip or Kanate. I think if Matip is injury free, I think Matip will start. Uh, midfield again will have to be Fabinho and Henderson. But I think, Mi mm, in, yeah, I think Milner might start. Which again, I'm not overly happy about because when Milner and Henderson play in the midfield together, they're industrious. They work hard but there's very, very little invention and creativity. Mm. And then up front, I think we'll go Jota from the left, Firmino through the middle, and Taki Minamino on the right. So that's, that's still a very strong squad. It is, it is strong, yeah. is, You mentioned about Henderson and Milner in the middle, but just thinking about it from a Palace perspective, in a way, that might work out well for you guys because of our creativity, like the, the likes of Conor Gallagher. If you can Holly. put Milner or... Henderson on him and stop him, then that is, you know, that's still a very good task from Liverpool because he's been on mm. form. So it, that midfield battle will be interesting. But you mentioned a bit about Palace. Last time around when we faced you, you guys beat us 3-0. But it was mainly due to set pieces and Jurgen Klopp even said it. It was one of his hardest 3-0 victories ever Definitely. in his career. So it wasn't an easy game. For Palace, as a neutral fan, um, what do you think we should it, we can achieve with the squad this season? We're, we're on an FA Cup run. I don't know if you call it a run. We were, we've only won one game. We're yeah. still in the league. I mean, we're 12th. What, as a neutral, where do you think we should finish? I think you should aim for a top half finish. And I, I think you've had the personnel to do that for a few years. But under Roy Hodgson, again, I know from experience, watching Roy Hodgson football is tough. And I don't know how you guys did it for so long. So shout out to all the Palace fans that put up and stayed through that. But in terms of this season, with what you're doing with Vieira, the personnel, Conor Gallagher has been a revelation. Absolutely fantastic. The fact that he's being compared to Lampard says a lot about how well he's playing this season. Then you look at your likes of Zaha, who's always been a top, top footballer. Eze, who's just come back from injury. Elise, who's just quality. He's got sauce in that left foot. I think you're maybe lacking a striker that would take you slightly higher. Benteke has been good this season. IU's been good. Edouard looks very good, but Edouard still strikes me as a, a forward rather than a killer striker. Um, obviously, you're out. You're without Coyote for this game as well, who again has been able to play in his rightful and his, his best position, which is central midfield. A lot of last season, if I'm not mistaken, he was playing centre-back. but you, You've addressed that this season. And again, you look stronger at the back for it. Mitchell, big fan of Mitchell. Think he's really good. Um, so, surprised you didn't try and get another right back. I think Joel Ward's solid, mm. but I think you could improve in that position. Again, I've got a soft spot for Kleine, but again, don't know what's going on there because I thought Kleine would have started a few more games. But I think you guys are a really good team. I really enjoy watching you guys play. 
So talking about players, you mentioned some quality players that played against Arsenal, but there's no Salah or Mane. Mane is the big. You would think I'm more worried about Salah, but I'm not uh, because Mane always, all, yes. whether it's at Southampton, whether it's at Liverpool, he loves a goal against Palace. He's not going to be in that game. So Diego Jota is the name that comes into my head. Is there anyone else that we should be worried about due to their form? Firmino, not necessarily due to his form. Firmino likes a goal against Palace as well. Um, last season at your place, again, it was with no fans, but he was sensational that day. And he got the two, he got two goals. He, he was just, he was electric and he, was, he looked like that was the old Firmino. He seems to turn it on against you guys. I remember when we won the league in 1920, he got the, the winner in the dying minutes of that game as well. When we beat you 4-2 in Klopp's first uh, full season, I think 16-17, he scored the fourth goal and the decisive goal in that game. I'd expect him to have an impact on this game. Jota as well. Minamino, I mean, scored against you guys last season, but yeah. I still think he's trying to find his feet at Liverpool. So I'm not saying he can't be a threat, but he's not the ideal threat. I think Firmino, but especially Jota's just, he's electric. His movement, his timing, his finishing, the, the boy's quality. So you mentioned some weaknesses in terms of throwing away games, but tactically, what areas do you think we could potentially exploit um, in the game on Sunday. You're, you're asking a lot for me, Eddie. You're asking yeah, exactly. Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm set me on a task, now. man. <laughs> yeah. <This> is, <laughs> um, he's going to be watching this. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to be honest. I think your best bet in this game, set pieces, but okay. also trying to play through our midfield. If it is going to be Milner, Henderson and Fabinho, there's very little athleticism in there. So if you can play through that and you can play past the press of the front three, then I think you'll have a really good chance because then you'll be straight at our defence. And as good as Van Dijk is, he's still not back to his, his best form. Um, and I just think it will be a lot more difficult for us to, to control the game. And I think midfield's key for us to control the game. So if you win the midfield battle, it could become really, really sticky for us. Yeah. And then finally, score predictions. How do you see it going? I'm going to go 2-0 Liverpool. To your Liverpool. For but a man who said that you're worried about the game, you seem very comfortable in your score nah, prediction. <laughs> it, it's the whole striker thing with you guys. Mm. You, I, I expect you guys to have good portions of the game where you give us trouble. I expect Conor Gallagher to always be giving trouble and popping up in certain areas. Eze just come back from injury. He's not going to be fully sharp. Elise against Robbo. I'd fancy Robbo because Elise, in my opinion, is not a natural winger. He can play out there, but he's not a natural winger. Um... But I, I just think surprise you. No, nah, he might do. You. He might do. He's quality. He's quality though. He's very good on the ball. Very good on the yeah, ball. But I know what is. you mean by his pace. He doesn't have the pace, but his skill on the ball can just it, it causes team havoc. Yeah, I, it can I won't be surprised if he sent if he sent two players on him. Um, because that's what teams tend to do now. Because at least a one on one, it's uh, like it, yeah, it's Robertson is a very, is a good solid defender, but it's not easy. Not easy yeah. to defend at least. No, I agree. But I, the reason why I'm going 2-0 is because I think we'll be clinical, but I think we'll be a lot more conservative in, conservative in this game as well because we know the threat that you guys provide. If you had a killer striker, I'd be I'd be a very different scoreline I'd be predicting right now. But I don't mm. think you have that yet. But I'm hoping I don't live to eat my word. <laughs> <laughs> a bed take doesn't turn into bat is too <laughs> <laughs> ben Tegge, to be fair, Ben Tegge has actually been off form. So if he starts this game, I can just see him not off form, but he hasn't scored a goal um, for a yeah. while. So if he starts this game, then he, he might be on a score sheet scoring, scoring against the old club. But for me, I'm going to go for two one Palace win. I, I, it's optimistic. It's positive. No, but, it's not a crazy. Uh, like it's not a crazy prediction. Well, if you look at our last game against Brighton. Could be crazy because we did not play good at all. But we've had a break now. We've had a week or so. We had so many games coming up. We had Millwall, then we had Brighton, you know, mentally mm. and physically. The fatigue can play a part as well. But we've had a break now. Um, yeah. Some time to work on it on a on the training ground, some of our areas that we need to improve on. And I think the at home, that's where our form is very good. Away from home, we've only won one game, City, uh, City, uh, um, City 2-0. But Not at bad. home, yeah, we're, I think our form is like top six or top yeah, seven or yeah. up there. So we're very good at home. We don't, we rarely lose games. So I think we can continue that form and I'm going to go 2-1. But let us know what you guys think in the comments section down below. Do you think that we could go and get a result or are you on more Callum side thinking that Liverpool will get the win? And also let us know who you want starting for the game. And Callum, before you do go, where can they find you? 
Um, just search for Team Coppish. You'll be able to find me there um, at Callum Sanderson on all the socials. Um, you'll also find me chopping up with D on um, Fans Bet as well. So, yeah, any support would be greatly appreciated. But make sure you smash the like on this video. And make sure you support D as well. Yeah, appreciate that, Callum. Appreciate you, you coming bro. on, and hopefully the best team wins, and we end your league title hopes <laughs> in this game. <laughs> but um, thanks everyone for watching it, and thank until you. next time, up the palace. <laughs>